Hello everyone, little masters and little ladies. Well, here we are with another story. I'm sure you would love to hear another story. Maybe soon enough listening to my story, you'll start making your own stories. Right? And I hope you've started reading your story books yourself. That's wonderful. I knew it. This is going to happen. Okay. So the new story that I'm going to read to you, it has its name, The Pig with Green Spots. The Pig with Green Spots. And it's again by Enid Blyton, my favorite childhood author. So are you all ready? Should we get started? Yes! Love to. So there was once a pig with big green spots all over his fat body. He stood on the mantelpiece next to the clock. He was made of china and fitted. Underneath him was a little place to lock and unlock him. Because what was he? A money box. You're absolutely right. He had a curly tail and two pointed ears and he really was very ugly. Indeed, nobody knew why he had been made bright pink with bright pink with uh, green spots. They just thought he was terrible. He belonged to old Mrs. Loveday. She used him as a money box and he was he was quite full. He had a slit in his back to put copper and silver coins. So he had a slit and opening like we have in money boxes. And now that he was full, he felt very heavy. <clears throat> when Lucy came to see old Mrs. Loveday, she always looked at the pig with green spots. Standing next to the mantelpiece, uh, uh, standing on the mantelpiece next to the clock on the mantelpiece. She really couldn't bear him. She said she didn't like the way he looked at her and she did not like the big spots all over him. And here is the mantelpiece. <laughs> this is the mantelpiece, right? The, right, and you have a fireplace. And this is the girl standing, right? And what else can you see? Uh, this is the ugly, big, piggy money box. Now, pig with green spots. Well, let's see. He looks as if he's got an illness, she told her mother. I wish Mrs. Loveday wouldn't have him. He's ugly. But do you think it's a nice kind thing to say to someone? I guess not, right? All right. So, <clears throat> one day, Lucy went to see Mrs. Loveday by herself. Mummy had taken little brother James further on in the pram. She was going to call for Lucy when she came back. Lucy knocked at Mrs. She knocked at at Mrs. Loveday's old wooden door. But nobody said, come in. She turned the handle and the door opened. Lucy walked right in. Mrs. Loveday always told her to do that. Lucy liked walking right in. There was no hall in old Mrs. Loveday's house. You walked straight into the spotless kitchen. Wow. Mrs. Loveday was out in her garden hanging up clothes. Lucy looked around the room. It was a funny little room with red geraniums. Now what are geraniums? They are flowers. Yes, they are bright red in color. On the windowsill, a little rocking chair. Did you see the little rocking chair? Yes, we all love it, right? We all love to rock in it. And of course the pig with green spots was on the mantelpiece, just like I so showed you, as usual. I shan't look at him, said Lucy to herself. I don't like him. She sat down on the little yellow stool and looked at the clock. 
It had stopped. Lucy thought it would be a good idea to wind it up. Why? Because Mrs. Loveday liked to have little jobs like that done for her. So Lucy stood up and took down the clock. She wound up carefully. Then she reached up to the mantelpiece to put it back. And then a dreadful thing happened. Guess what? The clock knocked against the china pig. And the pig fell right off the mantelpiece into the fender below. Oh, smithering, smashed, broken into hundreds of pieces. And do you see something else flying around? Silver and gold coins that she had saved. Yes, see. Hmm. Would you like to have a drink of water? Mm -hmm. it, it smashed into a hundred pieces. They flew everywhere into every corner. Tiny bits of bright pink china. Some of them with green spots on them. The money fell out of the pig too. Silver and copper coins just like I showed you here and there. Into the fender, under the sofa, over the rug. There seem to be dozens and dozens of them. Wow! What a saving! Lucy stood and stared in horror. Look at that now. The pig was quite smashed and all the money was spilled. Whatever would Mrs. Loveday say? She must like the pig very much or she would never have had him on her mantelpiece for so long. Lucy was frightened. She didn't want to tell Mrs. Loveday. After all, nobody had seen her coming. Why couldn't she slip out and go and meet? Mummy, do you think she's thinking the right thing? What would you do if you were in her place? She could tell her that Mrs. Loveday wasn't there. Nobody would know. She had been into the kitchen and broken the pig. Lucy crept to the door like this. But even as she put her hand on the latch, she stopped. No, she simply couldn't run away. She's a good, honest, truthful girl. Wow. Right? Let's see what happens. She had broken something by accident. And she must say so. Even if Mrs. Loveday and Mummy didn't know and needn't ever know, she herself, little Lucy, would know and feel ashamed of herself for running away. Mummy always said you must never run away from anything. But it's awfully hard to stay, said poor Lucy to herself as she stood and looked at the pig. Oh dear, here comes Mrs. Loveday. Old Mrs. Loveday came trotting in. The elderly lady, see, she's there thinking whether to go or not. What do you think? And I need your answers. I'm sure you're going to send me the answers telling me what would you have done or what do you suggest? Whether she was right in staying back and waiting for Mrs. Lovesday or not? Hmm. Okay. Then. Now she's thought. But it's awfully hard to stay, said poor Lucy to herself. Old Mrs. Loveday, like I told you, came trotting in. She cried out in delight when she saw the little girl waiting for her. Well, I never, if it isn't Lucy, come along to see me again. Wow! Lucy looked at Mrs. Loveday and didn't smile. Please, she said, I've done something 
dreadful. I broke your money box. Big Mrs. Lofty looked down at the broken pieces everywhere and all the money. Lucy waited to be scolded. But to her enormous surprise, Mrs. Lofty laughed. <laughs> Bless us all, so that Ruggy Pig is broken at last, and I can get that money out of him. You know, Lucy, I lost the key ages ago and could not get out my money. I didn't like to break the pig because my sister gave him to me years ago. But I am mighty glad to see such an ugly creature go and to get my money. You have done me a good turn. Have I really? said Lucy, smiling all over her face in delight. Oh, I was so afraid of saying to tell you. Mrs. Loveday, never be afraid of telling a thing you have done, said the old woman, beginning to sweep up the beds. I think all the more of you being brave and good. Yes, so I do. And you see, I'm glad of the accident. Because I badly wanted all that money today. My granddaughter's coming to see me, and here comes a sip of tea with story time. And I want to bake a big cake for my niece. I'll take some of this money and go and some, buy some flour and currants and chocolate and butter. Ah, I'll make a fine cake. Lucy, I've come back for you, suddenly called Mummy's voice from outside the gate. Lucy said goodbye to Mrs. Loveday and ran off. She had picked up all the money she could see and there was such a lot piled on the table for Mrs. Loveday. That afternoon, Lucy went by Mrs. Loveday's house again and the old lady saw her. Lucy, my cake is lovely. You must have a nice big slice to take home to tea. Here it is. Doesn't that mantelpiece look nice without that ugly pig with his green spots? Yes, it does, said Lucy. Thank you for the cake. Mrs. Loveday, I shall enjoy it. She did. As she ate it, she told Mummy all about the pink pig. Mummy was pleased. There she is, enjoying the yummy cake with her mum and telling her the story. You are a good girl, she said, and how nice it is to sit here eating this delicious yummy cake, knowing that you got it because you were brave enough to stay and own up real. I'm very pleased with you, Lucy. I feel pleased too, said Lucy. I shall never be a coward now. It's much, much nicer to be brave. So what do we learn from this story? It's being brave in a different way. And being brave in owning up your mistake, confessing and telling the truth and facing the person facing the tune. And maybe you'll get a punishment also. Here she gets a good surprise, but when good deeds go round, good things come around. I'm sure you'll remember that. You're all very truthful ones, aren't you? Oh, you smart little kids. Now here is another story simmering for you. And here's another one who's saying, I certainly did not. And this is the name of the story. And this is again by my favorite author. I'm sure you know by now. Yes. Hello, Anya. Thank you for joining us. It's lovely to have you. It all began one morning when Dame Click's little grandson, Roly, let his ball go over the wall into Mr. Shouter's garden. Now, his name is Mr. Shouter, so you can guess what kind of a person he must be. That wouldn't have mattered much if only Mr. Shouter had not been sitting in his deck chair fast asleep and dreaming exactly underneath the falling ball. Hmm, now who do you think was there? Okay, 
But when he saw that it was only a ball that ha had hit him, he jumped up in a tremendous rage. He saw Rory's head sticking up over the ball like this, looking for a chance to go and retrieve or get back the ball. And he let out a tremendous roar, you boy, Rolly. And Rolly was frightened and slid back into his grandmother's garden. Yeah, okay, a sip of tea always makes me feel much better and the story much brighter, doesn't it? Thank you. You bad boy, you wiggle little scam, yelled Mr. Shouter, like his name was, throwing a ball at a sleeping old man. I'm coming over to smack you and I've got the hardest hand in Cheer Up Village. Oh, Mr. Shouter had a very loud voice. Rolly ran into Dane Click's house and hid behind the dresser in the kitchen. Mr. Shouter jumped straight over the wall and came after him. Scowling away, frowning away. I'll put you in the wash tub, he shouted when he saw poor trembling Rolly. I'll iron you out flat, I'll peg you up on the line, I'll beat you like a carpet cop. He had so many nasty things to say. Dame Click hustled in the kitchen, quite alarmed. When she saw Mr. Shouter, she shooed him as if he was a cat. Shoo, shh, shh was talking so loudly. Now, Dame Click. Let's see what she has to say. Shoo, go away. Shoo, shoo. Stop shooing me, yelled Mr. Shouter. I have come to get that grandson of yours hitting me on the head with his ball. Did you do that on purpose, Rolly? demanded Dame Click. I certainly did not, said Rolly from behind the dresser. It was quite an accident. I was just looking over the wall to say I was sorry. When you did it on purpose, you are a bad boy, a wicked scamp, began Mr. Shouter. All over again, he grabbed at Rolly and a chuck fell off the dresser onto his big foot. Ouch! Then how Mr. Shouter leapt around on one leg, shouting and holding his hurt foot. See what happened to him. So he's yelling around, prancing around, right? Okay. Now that's enough, said Dame Click. If you shoot, serves you right for losing your temper, said Dame Click. Shoo! If you shoot me again, I'll turn you into a hedgehog, you prickly old woman, cried Mr. Shouter. Now that's enough, said Dame. Click and picking up, uh, picking up a broom, she swept around Mr. Shouter's feet as if she was sweeping him up. Oh my God, how angry he was. Hmm, you wait, he said. You wait. As soon as I get back, I look up my magic books and I'll work some magic. Abracadabra, that'll make you very, very sorry. You wait and see. You'll be surprised at some of the things that will happen to you today. Shoo, shh, said Dame Click and swept him up again, just like you saw in the picture with the broom. Yeah. <clears throat> he went off to his own house, muttering and grumbling. Bub, bub, bub. Old Mr. Shouter had a very hot temper indeed. Now, don't you let your ball go into Mr. Shouter's garden anymore, said Dame Click to Rory. I can't. It's still in his garden and I guess he won't throw it over now, said poor Rory, scrambling out from behind the dresser. Are you soon going out, Gran? I'll go with you. Now Dame Click had a little granddaughter staying with her too. She was only a year old and she went out in a big pram. Dame Click sat her in it and put a rug over her, for it was a cool morning. Then she and Rolly and little Susie set out for the village shops. Mr. Shafter also set out carrying a basket. Dame Click saw him and kept carefully out of his way. She did not want any shouting in the middle of the Wednesday. Here is Dame Click going right and with the, the boy Rolly running around and the little 
sister in the pram. Now, said Tinkling, I'll put the pram just here where it will be safe. You come with me, Rolly, because I'm going to buy a nice lot of things and you can take them back to the pram for me and put them under Susie's rug. So off they went. Uh, where was I? Yeah. Dame Click, uh, leaving Susie fast asleep in the pram, she bought a fat chicken ready for cooking. She bought a beautiful new red shawl for herself. Wow, she bought a silver bowl for Susie to eat her porridge from. How she pampers her children, grandchildren. And she bought a pair of blue shoes for Rolly. She gave them all to him. Now run back to the pram and prop them into it, she said under the rug. Mine, and don't you wake Susie, Roy Rolly ran off. And Dame Click began to talk to a friend of hers. When she had had a good chat, you know how grandmas and aunts love to chat, when she, she went off to find Rolly and Susie in the pram. Susie was still in the pram, fast asleep, but Rolly was nowhere to be seen. Dame Click caught sight of Mr. Shouter at the next door. I, I expect Rolly saw him ran off home, she thought. Bad tempered old man, telling me he'd work magic on me like that. Poop, buck. She lifted up the rug to put in a loaf of bread she had bought. And my goodness, how she stared. Where was a fat chicken? Where was the red shawl? And what had become of the silver bowl and the blue shoes? In the pram was a smelly old bone, a ragged red duster, a broken dish, and a pair of holy old shoes. There, she is so disappointed to see all that, isn't she? Wow! He did work his magic, didn't he? It's that horrid Mr. Shouter. He's worked back magic on me as he said he would. He's changed my chicken into a bone, my shawl into a red rag, the silver bowl into a cracked dish, and the blue shoes into a broken down pair. Oh, the wicked old man! People heard her crying out and came to hear. She pointed to Mr. Shouter and said it all over again. Where's Mr. Clock, the policeman? Fetch him at once. Mr. Clock came with his notebook. What's the matter? What's the matter? He said sternly. It's Mr. Shouter, said Tim Click. See what he's done to me. He's changed my chicken into a bone. I certainly did not, said Mr. Shouter in a loud voice. And my red shawl into a rag. And my I certainly did not said Mr. Shouter in a loud, still loud voice. Well, if you didn't, you have taken them then, you bad fellow, said Dame Click. And she began to cry. Arrest him, Mr. Clock. He said he would work back magic on me, and he has. I know I said that, but I was in a temper, and I didn't really mean it, said Mr. Shouter, looking worried. You'd better come along with me, said Mr. Clock, and he walked off with Mr. Shouter. Everyone around said comforting words to Tim Click. To think she had spent so much money and then had all her things changed into rubbish. She went home, wheeling the pram. Susie was still asleep, thank goodness for that. When she got home, the kitchen door was open and Rolly was sitting at the table playing with a puzzle. And dear me, what were all those things on the floor beside him? Dame Click's eyes nearly fell out of her head. Yes, a fat chicken ready for cooking, a beautiful red shawl, a silver bowl and a fine pair of small blue shoes. She gave a gun and sat down into a chair. There she sees all those things. Can you see them? Hmm. All right. Rolly, where did these come from? Why, Grand, you gave them to me yourself, said Rolly in surprise. But I didn't like to put them into the pram as you told me to because Mr. Shouter was nearby. So I brought them home instead. 
Oh my, oh my, I have sent Mr. Shouter off to the police station with Mr. Klopp, said Dame Cricket dismay. But how did all those awful things come to be in my pram? Awful things? What awful things? asked Rolly. Oh, those were grand. My friend came along, Pippi, you know, and he was taking the bone to his dog and Rag was polishing up his bicycle. And the cracked dish was to be mended and he was going to give the old shoes to the tramp at the crossroads. But he wanted to go and play football with the other boys. So he put them into the pram for a few minutes. Wow, what a surprise even for us. I wasn't expecting that. Were you? Mm -mm. This is terrible, said Dame Click. Who'd have thought of such a thing? Take the things to Pippi at once, Rolly. Oh my, oh my, now I must go to the police station and fetch back Mr. Shouter. So off she went, wheeling the pram with Susie in it, still fast asleep. When she got to the police station, Mr. Clock was shouting at Mr. Shouter and Mr. Shouter was yelling at Mr. Clock. I tell you I didn't. I certainly did not, yell Mr. Shouter. As if I do a thing like that, changing all those nice things into rubbish, I certainly did not. Oh, Mr. Clock, it's all a mistake. Oh, Mr. Shouter, do forgive me, said poor Dame Clay. And she did her best to explain, though she was very much afraid. Of who? Mr. Shouter that he would turn her into a black beetle. But he did not. He began to laugh. Then he patted Dame Clap on the shoulder. Funniest thing I've ever heard for a long time. Yes, we all got a great surprise. I didn't expect that twist in the story. Funny. So, ho, 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 so Pippi put all that rubbish there. Hmm, said Mr. Clop, annoyed all the notes he had put down in his book were of no use after all. Hmm. I have a good mind to arrest you, Dame Click, for making a fuss about nothing. Dame Click squealed and rushed out of the police station as if a hundred tigers were after her. There she is, squealing away and running away. <laughs> oh, Mr. Shouter, I'm so sorry, stammered Dame Click. Such a lot of foolishness. I suppose you wouldn't come in and have a piece of my chocolate cake. Would you? And a sip of my lemonade just to show there's no ill feeling. I certainly will, said Mr. Shouter and went to her cottage with her. As soon as Rolly saw him, got behind the dresser again. But how he started when he saw his grand Mr. Shouter sitting down to eat chocolate cake and drink lemonade. And would you believe it? In half a minute, he was on Mr. Shouter's knee eating chocolate cake too. A storm in a teacup. Everything is peaceful now, but just wait till that rascal of a Rolly lets something else go over the wall. Well, do you know what happens again? They, it could raise up another storm in the teacup. Right, oh, that was a fun story, wasn't it? I loved it, so I was dying to share it with you. I hope you all had a wonderful time, isn't it? Hmm, it's so much fun sharing stories, reading stories and listening to them. We learn so much. We go into little other peoples in other countries, their minds, their hearts, right? And come to know what they think. At the end of the day, we realize they're just like children, children like us. Whether they be brown, whether they be white or whether they be dark or black, we are all the same. And all lives matter. And I hope you remember we have to watch out for Corona. We have to wash our hands, wear our masks, use sanitizers. Is that right? Yes. And keep a social distance. Do not hug anybody. Do not shake hands. I hope you remember. Lovely to see you all. See you next week. Bye-bye. Thank you.